Hello, good morning, friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel, Code One Digest. Today, in this video, we will learn the database per service design pattern for microservices. I'll explain what is database per service design pattern, where to use this pattern, and what are the advantages of this pattern. I will also give you the real world examples of this design pattern. So stay tuned. It is going to be very exciting and there is a lot of learning in this video. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about client side UI composition design pattern. Can you explain what is client side UI composition design pattern says? If you know the answer, please provide your answer in the comment section of this video. If you have not seen that video, so please go and watch that video. The link is provided on your screen and also in the description section of this video. For more information, go and watch the previous video on Code One Digest channel. What you need to understand, Susan, is that everyone has an agenda. Okay. So friends, here is the agenda for the video today. I'll give you introduction of database per service design pattern. Then I'll show you the real world examples of database per service design pattern. Then I'll explain you where to use and how to use this pattern in your project. We will also cover the benefits of this design pattern. Then at the end, I'll summarize what we learn in this video. And I'll also briefly touch upon what I'm going to cover in the next video. So stay tuned and keep watching Code One Digest. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I request you to subscribe this channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality videos on programming, coding concepts, design pattern and design principles, cloud and container technologies, but I'm not getting subscribers. I request you to like, share and subscribe this channel so that I can grow a Code One Digest family. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Okay, friends. Now let's start with the database per service design pattern. This is the first design pattern in database design pattern category. Database per service design pattern offers data privacy, data resiliency, and loose coupling in your application. Loose coupling is the key characteristic of a microservices architecture. Hence, microservices should store their information from its own data store. This pattern provides flexibility to choose the most appropriate data store that is relational or non-relational database for your application and business requirement. According to this pattern, microservices don't share a database and changes in a dedicated database doesn't impact the other microservices. Data storage of microservice cannot be directly accessed by other microservices and can only be accessed through APIs. Dedicated data storage improves the resiliency, security, privacy of your application. This pattern also rule out the possibility of single point of failure as every microservice has its own dedicated data storage. Wow. Let's understand this pattern with an e-commerce solution where we have three different services like sales, customer and compliance. As shown in this example, different databases are used by different services like sales, customer and compliance microservices. These microservices are deployed as AWS Lambda function and access through an API gateway. AWS Identity Access Management policies ensure that data is kept private and not shared among the microservices. Each microservice uses a database type that meets its individual requirements. For example, sales uses Amazon Aurora, customer microservice uses Amazon DynamoDB, and compliance microservice uses Amazon Relational Database Service that is Amazon RDS for the SQL Server. The concept of allowing different persistence storage are called as polyglot data storage. Polyglot data persistence is a conceptual term that refer to use of different data storage approach and technologies to support the unique storage requirement of various data types that live within enterprise applications. Really? Let's see another example of database per service design pattern. In this example, the product catalog microservice is using NoSQL document database for storing catalog related data, which is storing JSON objects to accommodate high volume of read 
operations. The shopping cart microservice using a distributed cache that, is, that supports its simple key value storage. The ordering microservice using a relational database to accommodate relational structure of its underlying data. Because of the ability of massive scales and high availability, NoSQL database are getting high popularity and becoming widely used in enterprise application. Also, their schema-less structure gives flexibility to development on microservices. Hence, using this pattern gives us the flexibility to go for polyglot persistence storage. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. <laughs> now let's see some of the use cases of this design pattern. Where to use this design pattern? Use this pattern when you want loose coupling between your microservices. If you don't share databases, then you will obviously going to decrease your dependency between the microservices. Use this pattern when microservices have different compliance and security requirements for their databases. So you can choose to use NoSQL database for one microservice and you can choose to use RDBMS for other service as per their compliance requirements. Use this pattern when you want more granular control of scaling. In application, we often do more read operation than write operation. So whenever you have microservices used for the read operation, you can scale that respective database. You can have multiple replica of that database and you can independently scale up and scale down the databases for different microservices as per the given requirements, right? Oh, wow, that is really, that's amazing. Now let's see some of the advantages of this design pattern. Each database can scale independently. Microservices domain data is encapsulated within the service. If one of the database server is down, then this will not impact the other services as each microservice has its own dedicated data storage. So database failure can only impact that one service, but your other service will still be up and functioning. This design pattern ensures that the services are loosely coupled. Changes to one services database does not impact to other services. Each service can use the type of database that is best suited to its need. For example, a service that does text search could use Elasticsearch, a service that manipulates a social graph, could use Neo4j. Polyglot data persistence gives ability to select the best optimized storage needs for the microservices. Though there are also few disadvantages of this design pattern, like it might be challenging to implement complex transactions and queries that span the multiple microservices or data storage. You have to manage multiple relational and non-relational databases in your setup. Implementing queries that join the data that is now in multiple databases is challenging because you have separated and segregated the data into their dedicated storage. Your data stores must meet two of the cap theorem requirement that is consistency, availability, or partition tolerance. What the hell are you talking about? Friends, now let me summarize what we learn in this video, what we learn about database per service design pattern. So I gave you introduction of database per service design pattern. I gave you the real world example of database per service design pattern. Then I also explained you in which scenario we can use this design pattern in our project. We also understood the benefits of this design pattern and what all the drawbacks that we have using this design patterns. Right? So friends, let me know if you have already used this design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this pattern can be useful. So provide your answer in the comment section of this video. Well, I can, I, I do, I do not understand. Friends, in the next video, we will discuss about shared database per service design pattern. In that video, we will learn what is shared database per service design pattern, what are the real world examples of shared database per service design pattern, in which scenario we can use the shared database 
for service design pattern and what are the advantages do we get out of the shared database per service design pattern so stay tuned for the next video and keep watching code one digest if you are new to the channel so do subscribe to our channel to grow the code one digest family you're goddamn right friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues this is very useful information for students beginners and software engineers i am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents so please help me growing the code one digest family please subscribe to code one digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos thank you